This week on Hermitcraft. Welcome back, welcome back to another episode here from the Hermitcraft server. Haha, <laughs> where the funny people live. Welcome to the Hermitcraft Recap, my name is Pixorus, our writer is Louis XP. Captions on this video were provided by Liara. And appropriately, it is week 77 of Hermitcraft Season 9! Which is probably what Doc was yelling when he logged back in this week, him being German and all. The moral of the story seems to be never go on holiday, unless you're spending that holiday creating a massively successful Minecraft mod pack. Feels so good just seeing him back. Ladies and gentlemen, there we have him. A wild eskull in his natural habitat. The siren song of shenanigans seems to have lured Iskal85 back onto the Hermitcraft server from his sabbatical of Vault Hunters development, and rumour has it that he'll be back to making Hermitcraft episodes soon. So yes, we will address the elephant in the room shortly before it starts trampling through the neighbouring countryside and crushing everyone's builds. If you really want to hear what we have to say in the future, there's a convenient subscribe button for you under the video. And with that out of the way, let's take a look at all the events and mishaps that occurred on the Hermitcraft server this week. Starting with Rendog, who proudly declares Boombox Records open for business, so you can all show up and start putting coins in the jukebox now. Well, I hope you guys love it. I, I, I think it is so epic. I'm so happy with how it's turned out. Uh, maybe this should be Jono's studio act, but maybe this is where Jono comes and makes all of the Hermitcraft music, right? While the shop is still waiting on stock of the treasure music discs that can't be farmed directly from Creepers, what it does have is a grand entrance for all the music royalty to show up at, and a studio upstairs where they can lay down some fire tracks. Rendog, on the other hand, lays down some ice tracks, making incredible progress on his section of the ice boat racetrack that zips through a frozen ocean. For now, the only obstacles are polar bears, but Ren eliminates another massive obstacle by ripping through a landscape to connect his stretch of the track to Ethos. This will be the biggest ice boat race in Hermacraft history. So, oh, for sure, yeah. yeah. I don't think you're going to be able to be beat it, though, Ren. I hope you're ready for next season to, you know... Oh, no. Another collaborator arrives in the form of False Symmetry, who wanted to contribute her building expertise to the starting area. And meanwhile, Ren discovers some pro tips for creating custom-feeling cherry trees for the racers to dodge between. I'm oh, over, no! I'm overtaken. No, I'm overtaken. I just went into my... I just made these sand traps. Yeah. I just went into it. Well, so you shouldn't annoying. have added them then. Oh, my okay. goodness. I just took the best corner of my life. Joe Hills is also preoccupied with cherry trees, but only because Cub Fan's reputation precedes him at this point. Oh, wait, I was going to ask, did you steal my trees? Or are those somebody else's trees? Are you mid-theft? Oh, yeah. Did you just not get to the moss yet? I don't know. Bruce Banner, he was just eating breakfast, and they came and snatched him. Kidnap. Although Cub has got yoinking bits of the server down to a fine art, he's interested in the other fine arts he can display at his museum, so he asks Joe to contribute a poetry corner by writing a piece about his pinball machine, which coincides with him officially entering the planning phase of the individual components, all themed around deep space telescopes. So the Hubble Space Telescope is the most famous visible light telescope, and that'll be represented by the pop bumpers. It's worth noting that Joe actually hopes to build the Deep Field Pinball Machine IRL at some point in future, and might even be able to use his Hermitcraft build of the cabinet as a blueprint of sorts. The main difference being in real life, you can't be the ball. Having invented his share of minigames in the past, Azumavoid joins in the emerging race of meta entertainment and brings forth a whole new version of Bed Wars, which is hilarious given that he was the one who seems to have come up with the whole thing way back when. Okay, this is a game that I released called Rush that I've been playing with friends. So it was a rather simple concept revolving around having a bed on either side and then trying to destroy your opponent's bed to knock them out of the game. This got picked up by a lot of servers and is now commonly known as Bed Wars, although the game has obviously evolved a lot over the years. This promises to once again be a groundbreaking development, as that is what the game mostly consists of, breaking ground. The twist of the formula is that instead of being on two opposing islands in a void, the teams will be buried within a straight corridor of obsidian, separated by solid chunks of material. From there, the players are forced to break through the progression of the game until they're in a position to destroy the enemy's home bed and take them out of the game once and for all. And then they have to start punching some wood, right? And going through each of the layers and discovering all of the resources. And then eventually the other team at some point around the middle. As if in preparation, Corrales spends the week tunneling through the nether to make sure his base is finally connected to the nether hub 77 weeks later. 
though his case involves more of the building of the tunnel than actually digging it out. And so the handcrafted environment is extra nice, with the fog effect river leading you to the portal, which is quite fitting since Corralis' base is in fact a port. Though there's also a bus crashed across the canal making a sort of dam, which too is fitting as this build is damn impressive. Yeah, we need to make this pretty. But for the moment, this will have to do. It does look better than it did. Also of note is that Corrales stops by XB Crafted's Ore Spy minigame, because I mean, look at him. If he can't find all the ores with these magnificent peepers, what chance does the rest of the server have? <laughs> Kralison. Well, maybe they could try using their noses instead. It'd certainly be following the example of XB Crafted Sniffers, who get perhaps the best treatment on the server as he adds a new exhibit to his zoo. To match their prehistoric origins, he sets up a little diorama of bone blocks, a geothermal spring, and a grassy area for them to sniff up their seeds. The clever twist is that a hopper minecart is collecting the seeds as they dig them up, meaning XB can collect them from a convenient chest just outside the exhibit. Oh, can I? Put sugarcane, like, literally right there. <gasps> nice. If you smell more minigames cooking, you're probably downwind of Vintage Beef, who continues preparing the island he's marked out for his TCG Battle Royale game. This mainly involves lighting up the island so the contestants only have to fight each other and don't risk any dropped cards being blown up by unexpected creepers. Even more unexpected is a flyby musical interlude from the Joe Hills family band, as Joe swings by with his sister Quinn in the studio and they bust out a song while trying to track Beef down. What was that? Are you hiding? <laughs> I'm not. I... I found him! <laughs> <laughs> After they've taken it to the bridge, so does Beef, building a mythical sausage-inspired bridge from the central island to the sandy hillside next door. That's a nice looking bridge! That is a nice looking bridge! What goes around comes around, and having went around his whole museum looking for the re-hidden easter eggs last week, Cubfan decides not to use IG Evans' voice as the primary narrator of his museum after all. They're the ones who took our eggs and hid them throughout the museum last time. Don't worry, we'll get them back. We'll get them back. Instead, Cub wastes no time and voices all the explanation segments on his own, making sure to add redstone bits that play the pre-recorded messages whenever you twist a heart of the sea on the floor in front of whatever exhibit you find most curious. Which certainly could be the very turtle egg that's been luring zombies and drowned to 0-0 coordinates for half the season, or the Scarland VIP tickets Cub somehow found in the trash before anyone has had a chance to buy any. We also found two VIP Scarland tickets in the trash bin outside of Scarland, so, we nabbed him up. Come you really way. have Come one in the way. trash. No, no, I took it out of the trash. It doesn't what? belong in the trash. Well, where in the trash was it? We could point our fingers at Impulse SV, but he's been a model employee as he fixes up the turnstiles for the park entrance. It's the zombies validating your tickets who are clearly goofing it up. Oh, he, 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 there you go. Where did it go? He's wearing it as he's, a hat. Oh no, Scar is wearing it! <laughs> Although clearly anyone would be feeling a little loopy after hearing the looped voice of Doc M77 from the flagpole at the perimeter. And Impulse decides to double down on that by fixing the announcement system at Scarland to go off at the right times and with the right radius to hear them anywhere parkside. With that job managed, he sets up his office space, complete with inspirational quotes from Disney Park Imagineers and a widescreen gaming rig. And we'd expect nothing less from the guy dressed as a Super Mario brother. Once the park entry can actually be used as such, Scar gets to making the whole situation look more welcoming too, even for the non-paying customers, as in, the passerby. Once Grian's misaligned Stargate is out of the picture, Scar makes it up to his neighbours by making the landscape leading up to the entryway as pleasant as it is vibrant, to the audible protest of his cat, admittedly. Right. It's cool looking, Jelly. Don't, don't tell me you could have done it better. You've never even been to Disneyland, so what, quiet down. After that, just gotta actually sell tickets into the audience that's much more likely to fish them out of the garbage bins. Seriously, Cub, there's a nice trash sorter on the server, all you had to do is ask. Well, these are display models, Cub. You need an actual physical ticket to get into the park. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. But the event we've been dancing around can't really be avoided any longer, because for Mumbo and Grian, it's kind of the main event. 
Meeting up for one final attempt at making Doc M77's life inconvenient, Grian proposes they cover the entire 500 by 500 of the perimeter with a natural landscape. He's even done the monster maths of how many blocks it'll take. We yeah, 3,904 yeah. stacks. I'm starting to regret things, but we're too deep in it now, fellas. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna see this through. No. There's absolute sunk cost right now. We could do wonderful yep. things with this dirt. So yes, gathering the dirt to cover the perimeter basically involves creating several smaller, shallower perimeters elsewhere in the world. And for the three of them, it could take a vast amount of time. But Scar now has employees, and the weekly Hermitcraft meeting came up. If we just kind of put it out there to the rest of the server, hey, does anyone want to mess with Doc? Mm, we might get a few people interested, just saying. And some folks even turned up for the after party the following day. It's still going, Thank it's still going. Thank you so much. It's, Scott, I can't hear you, buddy. I can't hear you. <laughs> What happened to the goat's world? Yeah, the goat's world is it. gone. <laughs> yeah, I don't even see it anymore. What it's happened gone. to it? There's no goat's world. Uh, <laughs> Take that, Doc! I'm actually really scared. It seems the motivational quotes actually work. The end result is the perimeter sinkhole reformed into a landscape of rolling hills and artfully spammed oak trees, all one block thin. As Mumbo points out, it basically looks like some very localized time travel has happened. It is quite fitting that the three decide not to build anything over the formed terrain, because seriously, how do you even top this? But sadly, this threatens to be the last hurrah of the Buttercup 2 perimeter throwdown. After all, they did literally put a lid on it. Will you guys this come was, visit this me This was the end base? game, this is the final move. Uh, guys, guys, what is he gonna do? As painful as it was, uh, this might be some of the proudest work. It, it doesn't yeah. even look, you wouldn't even know that there was a yeah. hole underneath there. And finally, there's Doc M, who we had to leave for last, to give you as much time as possible to go watch his reaction to this yourselves, because we've already watched it several times, and it doesn't get any less funny. That's not even counting his first encounter with Pearlescent Moon's dragon made of dragon eggs. Look at this thing. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's like he's dragon shaming me. Thanks to scrubbing through the footage of the event, Doc now has a hit list of the people involved, and luckily for Azuma, it's in alphabetical order. He even considers keeping it for a split second, but naturally, it's worth the hassle of exploding the terrain a second time just to get the spawn rates of his various farms back. So after commiserating with Rendog, he sets off a new flying machine to clear the terrain, only to uncover the faces of his tormentors as the ground is broken near the Wither Skull Generator. Yeah, three and a half hours approximately we're running right now. So yeah, I guess, you know, another three, three and a half hours or something, and then um, we're done. If it was satisfying seeing the whole thing covered over, it's even more satisfying seeing it all 3D unprinted back into existence, and he even gets to straighten up the lines all around the edges. And that's about it for this week's recap. Our writer is Loy XP, and my name is Pixel Riffs. Captions on this video were provided by Liara. Don't forget to leave a like while you're still here, and subscribe so you won't miss future recaps. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.